near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Happy Monday, all you minties. Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 5. So, let's go, bub. I had to say it. Come on. Before getting started, a big thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on May 14th or 15th, depending on where you get your books. And speaking of the book market and direct market, what we're looking at here is the standard edition cover by Adam Kubert. This is the one that's going to be available everywhere. And I do want to point out the spine here because we're going to be looking at the first direct market cover and that is the one by ian churchill and that one has a different spine design on it so that is something to keep in mind now that's not your only direct market cover because on the right hand side that is your other direct market cover by tim cell and of course the spine also has a different design this is for the people that buy their books based on the spine i wanted to point out the differences and i have shared the three spines complete dust jacket designs on our social media last month if you don't follow us make sure you follow us and we put it on our patreon as well all right but let's come back to the book because everything underneath the dust jacket is the same so you have the wolverine logo here he is from issue 100 and of course the people that collected the issues know that issue 100 had that holographic look to it which is so awesome again the spine you have marble omnibus wolverine Wolverine there with a broken claw, and, and, and what's going on with his claws? They don't look shiny anymore. And Volume 5, Adamantium No More. Okay, maybe that's what's going on with his claws. What it collects, and of course the covers here, uh, rated Teen Plus, and the uh, ISBN retail price being $150. So I wanted to point out that I have been waiting for this book. For a while now because there we go there is my wolverine shelf i've saved a spot for it for a little bit now so right there wolverine five will there be a six i don't know i guess it really depends on the sales of this book but if you're getting them in hardcover or oversized hardcover or omnibus format that's where it will fit in right there and yes <laughs> i did have the yellow wolverine spine logo and no mention of a volume one reprint so we still need one with the new spine design. Let's look underneath the dust jacket here. Let's actually look at the flaps. I'm all used up and hurting. And I sure want to go home before all the wild things come snapping after me. Oh, man. What an era. You have another piece down here and one right here. This is uh, Tony Danielle, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And that's another Adam Kubert. And then the creators here. You have Larry Hama, Jeff Loeb, Adam Kubert, and Tim Sell. And just a little bit about the premise of the books, which I'll talk about here in a few. And then underneath the dust jacket is this really cool design. I really like this. Just taking different panels from the book and showcasing what the art is going to look like in here. All right. So let's go ahead and crack this open. I'll also be comparing it to the scans of the Epic Collections and the Phalanx Covenant scans okay let's go ahead and crack this omnibus open you have some black end sheets wolverine omnibus volume five what the heck is going on there uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second that was adam kubert this is a, a piece by val Samaics. and here are the credits look at the amount of pencilers and inkers my gosh larry hama Anna Senti, and jeff loeb taking top billing for most of the stuff in here with Howard Chaikin. Um, and then you have Adam Kubert and Steve Lytle. And also you do have Val Simaics that comes in. Ian Churchill, who did one of the variant covers, comes in actually for one issue. Your inkers are mainly Al Milgram, Mark Farmer, and Dan Green. But Mike Sellers and Fred Harper, to name a few others, Kevin Summers, Steve Pucciolato, and George Russo's. 
Mary Jevons doing the colors primarily, and then your letters, Pat Brozo, Dave Sharp, and Michael Higgins are some of your letters, and you have your assistant editors here, and your editors at the time on the books. Your table of contents, and where you're going to find each of these particular stories, what the name of the story is, and when it came out, as well as the issue number here. Perfectly mapped, by the way. And if you have been getting the epic collections like these right here, you have To the Bone and The Dying Game. Dying Game's been out of print for a while, but I think people voted for it in our top 20 most wanted Marvel epics. These don't include everything that's in here. So let's talk about what's included in here. So included in this book is Wolverine 76 to 101. The annual 95 Marvel Comics presents 150 to 151. That's the entire issue. Cable number 16, Wolverine Evolution, Wolverine Nick Fury, Scorpio Rising, Ghost Rider Wolverine, Punisher the Dark Design, Wolverine Night of Terra, Wolverine Gambit Victims 1 through 4, Uncanny X-Men 332, Logan Path of the Warlord, and then material for Marvel Comics presents 152 to 155. The book has 1,296 pages. So, before I talk about this book, I'm just going to go ahead and say I have to talk about some spoilers that happened in the previous volume. There's just no way around talking about the stories collected in here without talking about what happened in Volume 4, but mainly what happened in the Fatal Attraction storyline. All right. So, in X-Men 25, Adjectiveless X-Men, there was a big fight against Magneto, and Magneto ripped out the adamantium from Wolverine. Out of every single one of his pores, Wolverine was kind of left in a comatose state. And then in Wolverine 75, which follows up X-Men uh, 25, Wolverine pops out his claws. That means that his claws with bone had always been there. We didn't know that as a reader. That's, I mean, that's a big of a little bit of a retcon, actually, a big retcon. But they were laced with adamantium. So he does have claws. However, his healing factor isn't the same. And I love the fact that the first character that he has to fight in here is Lady Deathstrike because her father and the ties to Adamantium and then how she blames Logan for the demise of her father and what happened to him and eventually what happened to her. So this really does feel like a Wolverine World tour because at the end of Wolverine 75, he writes Jubilee a letter and it's a goodbye letter of, hey, stay with Chuck. This guy will take care of you. I need to go and heal. I'm not who I used to be. And that's what this feels like. It's like him being by himself. But it's Wolverine. He's never really alone. He has friends everywhere he goes. So it at first he goes to Canada where he confronts again Lady Deathstrike. By the way, this is the 90s. okay? And in this era of the 90s, prepare to do a lot of turning with your Omni. Because we had to do it with the single issues. They did a lot of experimental sideways art like this. A lot. So be prepared to do that with this volume. More so... There goes my camera. More so than the previous volume. So if, if, you, if you got a little bit annoyed by that, there's going to be more here. So Adam Kuber becomes the new ongoing artist. And yes, he's in Canada. And now we have a couple of other characters that are after him. You know, Lady Deathstrike is like, oh, sure, whatever. You don't have the adamantium anymore. So what's the point? So you still have Scylla, who is one of the remaining Reavers at the time. And teaming up with Bloodscream, going after him. So they have this whole fight with him, and again, drawn by the phenomenal Adam Kubert with artwork that is like this from time to time. And you can find out exactly what happens to the characters as they get separated. Well, I'll just say that. You have the fight here, the team up with Typhoid Mary. This is written by Anna Senti and Steve Lytle doing the artwork here. This comes from the Marvel Comics Presents. Again, the whole issue... Focusing on Daredevil, Wolverine, Vengeance, and Typhoid. Vengeance at the time was kind of the new Ghost Rider. As a matter of fact, Wolverine even makes a comment like, so, was the new Ghost Rider? Sort of. And then you get more of the Marvel Comics Presents. So this is the story here where he reunites with Tiger Tiger. So by the way, yeah, so from time to time, if you're familiar with that era or if you love that era of Madripoor, he does go back to Madripoor. He does hang out with Archie and O'Connell. He does hang out at the Princess Bar with Rose. And he does meet back up with Tiger Tiger. But in this story, he does run into a new villain that can kind of summon demons. And that's Abdul al Hazred. And that's all taking place in the Marvel Comics Presents, which takes us to the return of another character. 
And the introduction of a new one, this is Zoe, Zoe Culloden. And she works for the Lando, Luckman, and Lake agency, which is like this uh, law firm, if you will. A little more than that as the story dives in there. Now, she was, the her mentor was uh, Mr. Chang. Something happened to him earlier on. I mean, we are talking about Wolverine Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, and that comes to play here as to what happened to him and she kind of blames Wolverine. Now, she makes an appearance through here and she's going to be a very important character in the life of Wolverine. Not just her, but another character named Noah. We also have the return of Cyber. And I love the fact that someone other than Peter David is using Cyber because I really like the character. This is the Ian Churchill fill-in issue right here. And this is the only one that he did. And it's interesting that he got one of the direct market covers. But Cyber is the character that has adamantium laced arms and he's got poison tips of making you hallucinate. And this time around, Wolverine is now in Muir Island where he is reunited with Kitty Pride or Shadowcat at the time, Nightcrawler and Moira McTaggart. He wanted to go there because what's happening is that his adamantium being ripped out of him really did a number on his healing factor. So even in this, like, Cyber ends up crushing one of his claws, which is what you saw on the cover. However, the claws will eventually start to heal in a weird way. So it's kind of like a corkscrew. But they're trying to figure out, like, a diagnosis on him, why his healing factor isn't what he used to be. And something else that Moria no notices, this, I want people to be surprised. So I'm not going to say who he's reunited with here. Uh, and it's not Yukio, but I think this is one of my favorite stories in here. And I kind of wish I could show you because the artwork is done by Adam Kubert, but it's the part that I'm talking about is inked by Joe Kubert, his father. Now, something else that Moria noticed is that not only is his healing factor not what it used to be, but also... He's becoming a little more feral. His animal instincts are kind of taking over more and more. And that comes to play a little bit later. Now Bloodscream is teaming up with none other than one of my all-time favorite characters, LCD. That's right. And Albert. They come here. They're not with Puppy, but there is a Puppy story. And that's what she calls the Hunter in the Darkness, by the way. So we are looking back at Canada. There's a little bit of a flashback story. There's a time travel story that features the characters anytime they appear Oh, I just love it. And then we get to the Phalanx Covenant. So Wolverine, even though he's taking a break from the X-Men and he could have maybe shown up at the wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix, he does come back because Charles Xavier said, hey, we need some help. Our X-Men have been kidnapped and we have no idea what these creatures are. So Wolverine comes in here. So this is the crossover with Cable. Now, do you need to read the whole event? Do you need to read the crossover with X-Force and X-Factor and Excalibur or the uncanny X-Men and X-Men crossover, the Generation X stuff? Not really. Um, the story is available in a milestone trade paperback. It's also available in that hardcover. It is out of print, but to get everything out of the story what you really need is just this right now they're going to go and attack the main base and it crosses over with cable number 16 which is written by jeff Loeb, and this is also the artwork by steve scross who went on to do storyboards for movies oh actually no this is uh larry hama larry hama writes this one i forgot about that for some reason i always thought it was Loeb. um but yes steve scross went on to do storyboards such as the matrix so once that's over we come back and focus on wolverine but this time around it focuses more on the whole storyline of albert lcd and the hunter in the darkness we have this evolution storyline right here which is really interesting because this takes place before x-men 25 but it's placed right here so the book is collected both in publishing order and in chronological reading order that's what i find really interesting about this collection I, I would have mapped it the same way because there's some things that are being talked about here that just wouldn't make any sense putting it before Wolverine uh, 75. So he still has his adamantium here, so it's a little bit of a flashback. And it's interesting to see him team up with somebody like Boom Boom. You know, usually it's him and Jubilee, but this time around it's Boomer. This is the sequel to the Scorpio Connection, Scorpio Rising. Uh, Howard Chaikin joined by Sean McManus right there. Gloria Vasquez doing the colors. And this is also the return of another character that 
has ties to Wolverine and Nick Fury. Then we get this. I really love the colors in here. This is Ghost Rider, Punisher, and Wolverine. The dark design. Ron Garney, Al Milgram, but Paul Mounts. I'm a huge fan of his colors. Always have been. And this is the follow-up to The Heart of Darkness. This time around, something huge happens in here, though. Uh, you have Blackheart, you have Mephisto, and you have the fight against the three of the characters. Now, Ghost Rider himself is a little bit different during this time, too, because of the events that are happening in the Ghost Rider comic. However, the th ending of this book is such a big ending that impacts the Ghost Rider comic that's going on at the time. So I found that really interesting. I'm glad it's collected in here because as a completist, I would be upset if it wasn't in here. Now we go back to your previously scheduled Wolverine issues with the team up with Gambit here. We're back in Madripoor. And again, there's gonna be pages like that. And if you're noticing these type of pages, that's to make sure that we have the double page spreads in the right place. So they, they've done that. Sometimes it's black. Sometimes it's the X logo. Sometimes it's the Wolverine logo. Yeah, I said Archie and O'Donnell uh, would be back. Tiger, Tiger. So we are back in Madripoor. Now, some other character shows up here, but not for a good reason. And that is Maverick, who used to be part of Team X, along with Wolverine and Sabretooth and Mastodon and Wraith and all those guys. Uh, but he comes in with some bad news, which leads into issue 88 which is the Deadpool and Wolverine story. Now, this is drawn by uh, not just Adam Kubert, but also Fabio Laguna. And Fabio Laguna was one of these artists that was uh, what we call Jim Lee clones back then. You may have seen that picture before, Psylocke. Uh, he does this issue, and then he does the fill-in issue. I think it's this next one right here against um, an old foe, if you will. But you're going to recognize some of the artwork in here, probably from Jim Lee's Wolverine or probably from some of the other stories that Jim Lee has drawn in X-Men. Now, that leads into this story right here. This is issue number 90. And if you remember issue number 90, the way that this looks right now, looks a little too much landscaping. What's going on here? And that's because they were fold out pages in the comics. Like whenever the comics originally came out in issue number 90, these were fold out pages, like big, long pages. And then we would go back to the regular pages. This is the big fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth. And it ends on a cliffhanger. And the next story arc is the Age of Apocalypse. The Weapon X storylines. Which is not collected in here. Uh, because it's collected in the Age of Apocalypse Omnibus. And it, is it necessary? Not really. Not 100%. Uh, but we do come back from the Age of Apocalypse. Which issue 91 here with Duncan Rillow doing the artwork in this particular issue now wolverine is coming back to the x-men a little bit more and teaming back up with not just storm but also nightcrawler who was at excalibur at the time uh, and gene gray this is the team up with nightcrawler against the nigari which is those demons that first appeared during the dave cockrum era of x-men and then of course uh, kitty pride fought them you have the pinups back here and a backup story that features some members of Weapon X, including Slayback here, and George Washington Bridge, and some bonus pinups. I'm surprised they kept the bonus pinups here and not all the way in the back. Um, oh my gosh, am I talking about every issue? I'm sorry. Uh, nobody has, ain't nobody got time for me to talk about each issue. Uh, but yes, there's more confrontation between Wolverine and Sabretooth. Then we get the Knight of Terra. This time around, not by Peter David, but by Ian Edgington and John Ostrander. Jander Seema supplying the artwork here. So we're going back to the world of Princess Rain. Not Rain, like R-A-H-N-E, but Rain, R-A-I-N. So there is a connection there, of course. But it's like a medieval world, and there's a beast, of course, looking like Sabretooth. Then we get the Criminals, or Victims, not Criminals, um, four-issue miniseries. It's a great story. It's the first story by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sell for Marvel Comics, working together. This is before they did Spider-Man Blue and Captain America White and Hulk Gray and Daredevil Yellow. It's this team-up between Wolverine and Gambit. Again, Wolverine donning his bone claws here. Although, at times it looks like they maybe the inker or the color is added the bone finish to it because it kind of looks like they could be adamantium 
Uh, we do have a new character here that appears through these pages in the return of an older villain. And you can find out who that is by reading it, because I don't want to spoil it. This is the fight against the Juggernaut. By now, we're kind of hinting at something big coming. Not just with Wolverine, but the X-Men as a whole. So you have Life Force here, Hurricane, Spine, and where's Dirtnap? Dirtnap's a little rat. But they have freed Cyber to go and take him to somebody named Genesis. Now, this is the... Wolverine training Generation X, and here's Cyber again, no, not knowing what exactly is in store for him. Uh, this is the fight against Dirtnap, where Dirtnap can take over people's bodies. And again, more of the Guardian and Vindicator there, and this is what he looks like. I believe that's what they use, right? I, I want to say they used that for yeah, right there. Nice. All right, let's keep going through here. As now we have the team up with Cannonball. I love this camping trip with Cannonball and Caliban and Storm. And that leads all of it into issue 100. And again, Zoe and Noah playing a big part. Chimera doing this interdimensional multiverse. And leading to issue 100. Now, in order for me to talk about issue 100, I am going to do a big spoilers tag here in case you haven't read it. I know it happened probably 30 years. Oh my gosh, was it really 30 years almost? Woo, time flies. But still, you know, some people are new to the character. Some people are new to reading the stuff. All right. Anybody else that doesn't care or you just want to be here because you've read the stories? Let's talk about this. So, yes, the Dark Riders have kidnapped Cyber, ripped out his adamantium by eating the flesh. Like, they sent these little flying creatures to eat the flesh. And now Genesis, who is Cable's son, has kidnapped Wolverine. And what he wants to do is give Wolverine his adamantium back and make him the leader of the Dark Riders. So these are the Dark Riders who were Apocalypse Dark Riders who were introduced in the Endgame storyline on in X-Factor. But now they are with Genesis. He's calling himself Genesis. Cannonball, of course, interrupts this. And yes, Wolverine is now being forced to take the adamantium back. That's got to be painful. So, what happens? Of course, things don't go the way they're supposed to go. Uh, Genesis also wants to resurrect Apocalypse. Like, he's got the Tomb of Apocalypse. So, what happens is that Wolverine's body, the ceiling factor, rejects the adamantium, and the adamantium shards just go everywhere, killing Hurricane right off the bat. Look at that. Look at those colors. And Wolverine goes feral. Like, we haven't seen Wolverine go this feral ever. And then we get a hint as to who's going to come and help restore his humanity. But he goes and kills the Dark Riders one by one. Spine gets killed off screen. Deadlock gets killed. Uh, Gauntlet, who's one of my favorite characters. I always liked the design of him. I actually like the Dark Riders. Uh, and then he goes after Genesis. But this is what he looks like and will look like for a while. That is the no-nose Wolverine. So the next omnibus will be the no-nose era. So they have the fight there, and that leads into Uncanny. I'm so glad they collected Uncanny 332. This is what I meant by well-mapped. That's exactly where it belongs, immediately right after that. So Joe Matt gets a chance of drawing Wolverine. We still have to deal with Zoe and why she failed him and what exactly is happening to Logan. And how the rest of the X-Men are reacting. Also, Mendeus, of course, playing a part in this. Because this is leading into that big thing that I said, Onslaught. And I'm just glad we see Joe Mad in oversized format. I love it. That all reading, uh, all of it leads into Wolverine 101. Val Semaix now doing the artwork. And it is Elektra that will come and heal his humanity. Restore him back. And this omnibus ends with Path of the Warlord. This is a one-shot written by Howard Mackey and drawn by the phenomenal and late Jean-Paul Leon. It's another story that could be read at any time, but I'm glad they put it here in the back so not to interrupt any of the storylines. And then we get the back matter. So let's welcome everybody back that didn't want any big spoilers or any spoilers at all. We have the hologram. So that's the bones right there. The adamantium bones. I love this picture of the Marvel Age, which shows Adam Kubert, Andy Kubert, and their father right there. Just looking like a complete badass because he was. Um, Joe. And of course, Tarzan for Joe. And you have Andy's Colossus and Adam's Wolvie. 
Marvel Visions. So these articles are written about Wolverine, what's coming, what happens after Fatal Attractions, the big fight against Sabretooth, some pinups here from X-Men Unlimited, the holiday special pinups, some more pinups. That's what I meant. I'm surprised the pinups from the annual weren't back here. And the Marvel Swimsuit Special. Yeah, what was that? The Tiger Tiger? Yeah, yeah. Tiger Tiger. I remember these ads right here. The Wolverine for years. I've been fighting the tame, the beast inside me. Why even bother? And then these were putting the character back in the comics. I love that. The Wizard covers, the Hero covers. I forgot about Hero Magazine. Original page right there. So you do have some original artwork, some covers. And different trade paperback collections. And this is from the second printing of the trade paperback and the first printing there. X-Men First. That's by Tim Cell and some more collection covers. And then your end sheets. So let's talk about the build and the binding and then we'll do a quick little comparison. 1,296 pages. Sewn binding and baby look at that eye. This book is printed at the Donley printer. It's been a while since we've had a Donley omnibus. Um, there is a little bit of bleed through coming. Honestly, the paper stock is as thick as the most recent iMac printer paper stock. Uh, those have gotten thicker. So for anybody that's like, oh, that sucks. No, the, the iMac printers for the last couple months have been thicker than they've ever been. And that's what this feels like. Now, the binding, of course, you saw that eye oh, making those spread pages look smooth and wonderful. So let's talk about this right here because we need to talk about the colors and the scans. I've talked about it before when talking about the Epic Collection. So let's actually do that. Like, let's go back to issue. Let's look here um, because it's usually when it's like dark colors. It's because they were trying out new things with colors back in this era of the 90s that the colors look really muddled almost pixelated or blurry if you will because they didn't know exactly how to back up these particular images so they had to resort to scanning the comics as the primary source material so these haven't been touched up although it does look better maybe it's because it's an oversized format than it does here it's almost like you could see a pattern whenever it's dark colors. And that happens early on through the book. Uh, some of it looking a lot better than others, but to kind of give you an idea of, like, let's look at the Phalanx Covenant. I always use that as an example. It's the same scan that they've had for a long time. So the scan that they're using for Phalanx Covenant, it's the same scan that they've even used for the oversized hardcover. So let's actually looking better looks like it's cleaned up a little bit more you can read that it's not as blurry as the ohc over here but obviously I've, it is the same scan at the end of the day so what i've always said yeah the colors look a little bit better uh what i've always said is that this era believe it or not it's gonna be a while but is really in need of a let's see this is what they use for the hardcover and over here they use the wolverine logo of some restoration the Masterworks restoration. And that's what I said. It's going to be a while before we get there. But yes, the scans look a little bit better than they do over here. And looked a little bit better than they do in the Epic Collections. So here's the Epic Collection. And then the scans over here. Maybe it's because it's oversized it looks a little bit better. But I did want to compare it. And I did want to be as thorough as possible. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. BD Cosmos, the Canadian leader in graphic novels. They have a physical storefront in Montreal, Quebec, and their website, bdcosmos.com, offers 25% off your order of over $99 or more, and free shipping everywhere in Canada for every order of $200 or more. Their shipping care is exceptional. Your books will stay cozy through the rough Canadian weather and arrive to you in... Near Mint Condition! After checkout, let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way and you'll be added to the monthly $25 gift card raffle. Entries are valid for new and returning customers. Don't be afraid to call or email them. Ask them questions. Their staff is always happy to help guide you towards the right purchase. Visit their website, bdcosmos.com for more. B. D. Cosmos. With rewards and raffles taking care of customers in Canada.
A. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you have the epic collections and you're going to go that route, if you're hoping they make an Omnibus Volume 6, and if you're hoping they just finish out Wolverine in Omnibus format, one day, who knows? Uh, but if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there, and make my marble. Let's go, bub. I had to do it that again. That's like twice I did it. Anyway, sorry. I ain't apologizing. I meant it. Let's go, bub. <laughs>